This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's new Hurricane, Dragon's Martyr 2, Trumpeter's BE6 Mad, Dragon's Space Shuttle, and Mecha Paints and Tips from Ammo of MIG Dominion. Hi, I'm Aaron Skinner. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, the twice monthly internet show where Tim Kittle and I show you the coolest new kits and accessories. So, the first cool thing we're going to show you in this show is Airfix's brand new 148 scale Hawker Hurricane. This is the Mark I version of the famous fighter, which was the mainstay of the Royal Air Force's Fighter Command during the battles of France and Britain. Armed with two 303 machine guns, the tough Hurricanes produced many aces. Now, as you'd expect from the UK's leading manufacturer, this isn't Airfix's first Hurricane in 148 scale. There's actually been one in the catalog since 1979. This one is all new, and as with every recent Airfix kit, sets a new standard for molding and detail. The cockpit is a work of art, with seat and controls supported by a network of interlocking frames attached to partial wing spars. Part of one of those spars outlines the main gear wells, with part of the cockpit floor being the roof of the wheel bay. There's enough detail in both spots to satisfy most modelers, including a pilot. The designers have included just about any conceivable structural element that might be visible from the cockpit or wheel openings. The outboard ends of the wing spars outline the bays for the guns, and eight breeches and ammunition boxes are supplied to fill them. Then you'll need to cut open the bay opening to display the weapons, and Airfix supplies separate doors to model it that way. In a twist on the usual order of aircraft modeling, you assemble the cockpit and the wings, then add the fuselage. It's as pretty as the wings, with a nice representation of the fabric-covered rear fuselage and some detail on the walls of the cockpit. All of the control surfaces except the flaps are separate. The openings for intakes under the plane are molded as single pieces, eliminating awkward filling and cleanup. Very nice. Optional props are included, and there are different parts to model the landing gear up or down. Another nice touch is the inclusion of alternate canopy sliding sections. One is a little wider and designed to fit over the rear fuselage to show the cockpit. Clear plastic also supplies the prominent leading edge landing and wingtip position lights. Cartograph decals mark two hurricanes, including one flown by pilot officer Ken William McKenzie on October 7, 1940, when he rammed a Messerschmitt. The other is from number 605 Squadron at Croydon in September 1940. That aircraft has been restored. It's another delightful kit from Airfix. Moving to armor, we have the latest of Dragon's 135th scale Martyr IIs. These light tank hunters were built on Panzer II chassis by mounting an anti-tank gun on the back in an open compartment. Yeah, the initial armament was captured Russian 76mm guns that was replaced on lighter vehicles with German Pac-40 7.5cm guns. This kit represents the latter. Typical of Dragon German armor kits, the box is chock full of parts. The hull and major body components are cleanly molded with rivets and panel lines. The complex leaf spring suspension looks great. Individual link tracks give it traction. An open top vehicle means there's a lot to see inside, including the driver's position with transmission. The crowded fighting compartment includes structural framing, personal weapons, ammunition storage, and periscopes. The gun is beautifully detailed with optional muzzle brakes and multi-part breech and sliding block. That attention to detail extends to the gun shield and its many components. Photo etched metal is used for part of the shield as well as some brackets and the exhaust cover. The only decals are Balkan Croys, but the instructions show two options, including the striking cover subject of a martyr on Sicily. This is a nice bit of German armor goodness from Dragon. Next, let's take a look at Trumpeter's 172nd scale Beriev BE-6. Known to NATO as the Madge, this flying boat served as a maritime patrol aircraft through the 1950s and 60s. This kit is crammed with detail, featuring a full-length floor with complete crew compartments. It includes a nose turret, cockpit, engineering, communication, and navigation stations up front. Amidships, there's another gun turret and another in the tail. All feature seats, controls, and equipment, much of which will be all but invisible on the finished model. Fine engraved panel lines mark the major parts. Engine detail is simplified, but the one-piece cowls look good. All of the control surfaces, including the flaps, are separate and should be posable. Window parts, including large pieces for the cockpit, nose and tail are clear and sharply molded. Underwing stores and beaching gear finish out the parts. Decals provide markings for two madges, one Soviet and the other Chinese. This is a large model that should look right at home next to your Minicraft Mariner or Hasegawa Shinmeiwa. Say that three times fast. 
Now something for space fans. It's Dragon's 1144 scale shuttle with cargo bay and satellite. It's been a long time since we had a new kit of the Orbiter. Uh, this was originally released by Dragon with the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft. The part count is relatively low, but they don't skimp on detail. The cockpit and crew compartment are provided. The former includes seats and controls. You might think that's a lot of detail that I won't be able to see through the tiny windows, but most of the forward fuselage is molded as a single clear piece. And an outstanding bit of molding it is. The upper halves of the wings, port side of the vertical stabilizer, and covers for the orbital maneuvering engines are also clear. There's structural and equipment detail molded inside if you want to leave them unpainted. There's a lot to see in the payload bay, including structural details, space lab, and the robotic canadarm. The control surfaces are movable, and the landing gear can be displayed up or down. A small freestanding satellite is included. Decals mark the ship as Discovery in the early NASA worm logo. I like that the outlines for the thermal tiles on the white areas are given as decals. It's great to have a new model of the space shuttle, and this one's got some terrific features. Finally, we have one of the coolest things that Tim and I have seen in a while, not least because we like big robots. Ammo of Migumenez, probably best known for creating paint sets for esoteric subjects such as World War I German armor or camouflage from the Ukrainian conflict, has now released three sets for mechas. These are the big fighting robots piloted by humans. They were popularized in Japanese TV and movies in the 1980s. And is still popular today with TV shows, movies, manga, and hundreds, if not thousands of kids from Bandai. First up is a set of colors for mecha and robots. There are six 17 milliliter bottles of acrylic paint here. It includes three shades of gray, one dark and two light. One is a cold blue gray, the other warm gray brown. Then there are three bottles of the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, all commonly seen on Mecca. These acrylics are designed to be hand brushed or sprayed. Four of them have yellow caps, an indication that they contain a ball for improved paint agitation and mixing. Mig Jimenez is known for weathering, so it's not surprising that there are two sets for beating up Meccas. First is a chipping set, which contains a 35 milliliter bottle of chipping fluid. It works much the same as hairspray a 35 milliliter bottle of enamel engine grime, and a 17 milliliter bottle of acrylic chipping color. The second set, Weathering for Mechas, has three 35 milliliter bottles of enamel colors suitable for weathering heavy machinery. And should you need a little inspiration, Ammo of Mig Jimenez has you covered with a 92 page book devoted to the subject of painting and weathering the big bots. In combat, painting mechas features four detailed step-by-step -step projects with lots of photos. And for inspiration, there's a gallery of more than a dozen models from a couple of the featured builders. This makes me want to crack into a couple of Bandai kits, especially if I can find Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. I thought you you, you showed me like that test shot of... of Somebody's s doing a Max Factory or some company. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that would be a very cool kit to do. Um, this is really a good example of just how fun modeling can be. Yeah, it is. Now look for reviews of the Hurricane and these paints in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see these and other new products in the July issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting finescale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Tim Kidwell. And we love Mad Max. What a lovely day. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Three. I am the Night Rider. I'm a fuel injected suicide machine. I'm a rocker. I'm a roller. I'm an out of controller. <laughs> Can you see me, Toe Cutter? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>